right, so let's look at what it looks like on the brain. These are scans of the brain, and this is a dope, the, the red is dopamine activity. So we now are looking at somebody who abuses drugs compared to somebody who's never used drugs, and that's the change in the brain that shows the dopamine system is abnormal. And that corresponds with abnormalities in motivation and drive and consequently with behavior. This happens with all of the mood altering drugs. There's cocaine on the top, methamphetamine. Here's alcohol, normal, abnormal. There's a control of uh, heroin, and that's an addictive brain. And I'll show you some uh, opiate uh, prescription opiates next. This is marijuana. So unless we want to believe marijuana is a benign drug, that's a, oops, sorry. That's a normal brain, and that's a marijuana brain. And you can see the yellow and red activity is almost absent in the marijuana brain. Marijuana is a toxic substance. I don't care what the law says. Marijuana is a toxic substance. On, with regular use of marijuana, that's what brains look like. And this brain is not logical. This brain is not reason. This brain is driven to do things to get that drug that are against its code of behavior, just like any other drug. There is withdrawal from marijuana, and there's tolerance to marijuana. So it's not a benign substance. Now, the legality of whether or not we open dispensaries on every corner like California has and dispense it to anybody who can get a prescription from any willing doctor is not the issue of the day, but obviously I have some opinions about that. We'll discuss that during the question and answer period. But marijuana is not a, it's not a safe drug, it's not a benign drug. It affects the, the uh, endocannabinoids, cannabis is, you know, marijuana. The endocannabinoid system is present all over the brain, the cognitive part of the brain, the gut, which is why we get increased appetite, the cardiovascular system, the kidneys, and the immune system. So ingesting marijuana is toxic. Regular ingestion of marijuana leads often to tolerance and physical dependence. And if you have the disease of addiction, you're going to get in trouble with marijuana just like you do any other drug. And people who are abstinent from other drugs who smoke marijuana tend to relapse to the other drug. That's a message that's tough to get through, especially to kids. All right, judge, I'm not going to do any more opioids, but weed? You know, geez, it's legal. And the only reason it's not legal is the establishment doesn't want to, you know, whatever. So, <clears throat> here's some good news and some bad news. The good news is that in 14 months, this brain of abstinence, this brain is almost back to normal. It's pretty remarkable. There are hardly any diseases that respond to treatment like this disease. The bad news is that when you have somebody in your court who's a month abstinent, this is what their brain looks like. It isn't even close to normal after four weeks. So somewhere between four weeks and 14 months, they're going to get normal. But who knows when that is? It's easily months and months away. I show this to families, and it has an impact. Because you're sitting with your kid, and your kid is acting like he or she always did. You know, and what I say to families is, well, we didn't do a brain transplant. All we did was took the drug in. There's a lot of work to do. Partly natural healing from being away from the drug, partly some work to cause the brain to heal itself. In terms of opioids, that's a normal brain again with lots of red in the dopamine system. <clears throat> this is somebody on methadone for six months. Now, I don't show that slide to talk about methadone maintenance. If we have time in the questions, if you're interested, we can talk about it. But just to say, somebody on Oxycontin, Somebody on hydrocodone, somebody on long-term opiates has no dopamine activity. Let's see how they recover. That's an abstinence group. And you remember the first slide with all that red, we only have pink after six months of abstinence from opiates. So if you have a kid in your courtroom or in your practice who's acting weird still at six months, this is why. Their brain is not normal at six months. So it really underscores the importance of having sort of an ongoing attachment to abstinence, but also to some recovery.